Ashe. So when I went into this relationship, it always was that um, we were just friends. So it, it, we never went into it saying we were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. We went into it saying we would be just friends. Now, I think probably around the fourth, maybe the fourth month, I started really liking the guy. So it changed for me. It did not change for him, but it did change for me. Yeah. So are you going to still be friends with them? And just... Yeah. I'm friends with all my ex-boyfriends. I can get them all in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and, and anytime my kids have anything big, I always call my, my boyfriends and they always show up. Every last one, I'm going to be in the same room celebrating one little girl or one little boy. But, and the reason that is, is because I never walked away blaming them for anything. Right. I, don't, I don't blame them for my choices. If I chose to stay in that relationship and be miserable, that was my choice. Right. They've never been, they've never been dishonest with me. No one has ever said to me, I'm going to love you forever and be with you forever. And even if they did say that, which I've never had anyone say that, well, I have had someone say that, but we didn't, <laughs> but they believed it at the time they said it. They believed it and so did I at the time they said it. And I believed it at the time that I said it. So I never got upset with them for stop believing it. How do Dr. Nils, uh -huh. how do you know that you are totally healed from that hurt relationship? Um, I don't live in a space where I will ever be totally healed from anything because I believe that I'm infinite. And in order for me to be infinite, there's always room for improvement. But I am healed to the degree that I can experience life better than what I was. Uh, I say. I say. It's just giving myself permission to enjoy life and understand my choices. Once I understand my choices, then I know that I can make a better choice if I want a different result. I say that makes a lot of sense. I say. I say. Okay. You can ask me any question you want. If you're here, you can ask any question you want around around this topic. Just unmute yourself. Okay, Doctor. I couldn't really say anything. Um when um, you were on Facebook because I do have children and I have to be mindful of their feelings even though they're grown. Um, okay, hold on. Text me your question because this is not on Facebook, but it will go probably on one of my social medias. Oh no, I don't, I don't have a okay. problem. I okay. don't have a problem um, with setting up the scenario. The scenario okay. you asked um, if we had ever been played a game with ourselves in essence and had uh, expectations than than what we we ultimately experienced that was at the bottom line yeah. and my situ my situation was not um that i thought that you know i had a different type of relationship with you know with a mate mine was that um i could be their their savior and their healer uh, they were an alcoholic, um, I mean, a, but a, a diehard professional working alcoholic. And I just knew that, you know, I had the power to change them. And it, and it didn't. So I really was playing a game with myself, uh, feeling like 
I could not only change them, but I could make it the perfect life for both of us. And that, you know, so I was fooling myself. I say, I say. Do you do you know why you were fooling yourself? Um, yes, I do. I was young. Um, I was trying to prove something to my mom. Um, I also was trying to live up to what I had been programmed to believe was the American dream. You know, the big house, you know, the big house, the two-story house with the white picket fence, you know, in the big yard and, you know, so many children, so many cars, so many dogs, okay? <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> that that was my reality at that time. And I had all of that, okay, but I didn't have the um epitome of of a marriage that I thought I should have. Excellent provider, um really great supporter, but that alcoholism was just it was a monster. I should. And that's my story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, and I say, and I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Okay. I say. Yeah, like one of the things that uh, I ask myself eventually is um, why did I attract broken people to my life? Because even that uh, brother was broken. And that's why he didn't want to be in any relationship. So I asked myself, and ask Kim this, I asked myself, why did I attract brokenness to me? Because that was important for me to find out. You, you, you know, every woman who has attracted a broken person, because I'm sure if you want here, you have. If you haven't, just raise your hand. I like to see that one. Because <laughs> I've never seen it. <laughs> we have attracted someone who is broken to us. Now you have to go inside yourself. You might not, I'm going to share my answer, but my answer may not be your answer. But the answer is important to find. Because once you find the answer to the question, you will you will then be able to do the healing and not be in that space anymore. So the question becomes, why did you draw this broken person to you? And that's the question I asked myself. And the answer that I got was, I'm a healer. <laughs> that's what I am. I am sent to this earth to help people heal. So I'm going to attract brokenness to me all the time. And it is not my job to fall in love, give time and space to brokenness. I am there to assist them in their healing if they want it. But I can't assist them in their healing if I take a girlfriend role. I'm not your girlfriend. I am the healer. So it was me learning my role in earth. So, I have a question that came up. Yeah. Have you, in a sense, detached to boundaries and just set personal principles then from within yourself and embodied it as an essence as you come upon new relationships so that you don't constantly, you know, sit in counterbalance about it? Have you adopted personal principles and then that's just across the board and then as you dig deeper you communicate more clearly now or is that what came about yes that's exactly what came about and Thank i do but i did keep the boundaries and one of my boundaries is i don't date broken people <laughs> like when i see them and i know that they're broken to the degree that i feel like i need to help them i won't date them that's your sign <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. I won't I won't cross that. Beautiful, thank you. Mm 
Dr. Adu, I just I just want to say I just want to say thank you because um, for sharing your your situation your per, your your personal life um, because it's it's definitely um, gave me insight into um, things in my over my you know over my life where I can see where I've done the same thing or I've made the same mistakes I can definitely see it um, I can I can definitely relate to it as well and. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot to put yourself, you know, on the front line and say, hey, you know, especially being, you know, um, um, such a powerful leader that you are, you know what I mean? And, and but at the same time, at the same time, it shows us, you know, that you're just as human as we are. You're just as real as we are. And, you you know, you you make the wrong choices or you, you know, bad decisions, just like the next person. So I just want to say, I, I really appreciate you. And I appreciate you sharing what you shared today. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It takes a leader to see a leader. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I was just um, sharing with Dr. Tiffany yesterday, cause we spent some time together and um, I was, uh, uh, or day before, I don't know, one day this week, right? <laughs> I was, uh, was that Dr. Tiffany? I don't know, that might have been Nita. I, that was yesterday and I was sharing this with Nita. I was, I was sharing with Nita that there was a person, a, there was a person that I was sharing some time and space with. Some people call that dating. And my family and my friends were like, we love him, he's your husband, he's the one. And I said, he's not the one. He's, uh, he's here to teach me how what it looks like when a man is loyal he's here to teach me what it looks like when a man is loyal because i had not seen that before and i asked the spirit to show me what it looks like when to meet a loyal man and and he was here and he was a very loyal person and spirit uh put that together so that I can see what loyalty looks like. So I, instead of taking it and looking at it and going, this is my person forever, I recognized what it was there to teach me. And I stayed there and I learned the lesson. And then I, I shared this with you guys before, I, but maybe not you, Kiki. I'll share it again. This guy, my father taught me that all men cheat and there's no such thing as a loyal man. That's what my dad taught me. So I would never go, I would never pop up at somebody's house. Even, even when I was married, I would call my husband and say, I'm on my way home. So if he has somebody in the house, he can get rid of because I wasn't going to hurt my own feelings. So I never believed that there were, there's a such thing as coming to somebody's house, to a man's house. So he had invited me over to his house and I said, no, nope, I'm not coming because in my mind, some, I could be sitting in his house and a woman shows up because <laughs> he had just gotten out of a relationship. I was like, oh no, I'm not doing that. I think he had got out of a relationship like four months ago. I was like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not doing that. And he said, come over here, child, watch some TV with me and I'm order some pizza or whatever. So I was like, okay. And I hung up the phone and I called my cousin. I said, He's inviting me to come over to his house. And I said, I don't have a problem with him. I trust him. But when I'm over there, and then some girl comes over there, and that's just too much. And she said, girl, you don't get in your car and go over there? And I said, no. And she said, why? I said, I just told you why. I said, I can't do that. And she said, do you think that he would invite you over into a space that wouldn't be safe for you to come? And I said, I don't know what people do because men are crazy and <laughs> you can't trust them he could be still with his girlfriend for all i know and she was like no if he said it's over it's over he's not going to put you in a situation you need to go i was like nope, 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 nope. so she said if you don't get in that car i said well are you gonna stay on the phone with me and she said i'll stay on the phone with you and so I drove to his house and I parked in the parking lot and I said, I'm not going in his house. I'm not going. And he told me, he said, I'm going to leave the door open for you. Just come in. And I was like, this over said he's going to leave the door open for me. Just come in. That's a setup. Cause where the other girlfriend came in and I'm not, this is real talk. I'm not making this up. 
So I wish I can get her in here. She, so she, I was sitting in the parking lot and I said, I'm not going in, Angel, I'm not going in. And she said, if you don't get your butt up out that car and get through that door. And I just started crying. <laughs> She says, what are you crying for? I said, you are making me go into a man's house who invited me to come over and he left the door open. That's a setup. And she said, get to that door. So I got to the door. I knocked on the door. He did not answer. I went back to my car and sat down. I said, he didn't answer. She said, did he tell you to walk through the door? I said, yes. She said, go walk through the door. I said, I'm not walking through the door. I said, I'll hang up. So I hung up and I called him. He didn't answer the phone. <laughs> this is real. This is not, I'm not making this up. <laughs> he didn't answer the phone. So I called my cousin back. I said, he didn't answer the phone. And he didn't answer the door. I'm going home. She said, don't you go home. You get back to that door right now and walk through the door. I said, I cannot do it. And I started crying. She said, you got to do this. You got to do this. So I went to the door again. I knocked. He didn't answer. I said, he didn't answer. And she said, open the door. And I opened the door and the door was unlocked. So I opened the door and my heart's racing and I'm on the phone and I'm crying. And I opened the door and he's sitting on the couch. I said, did you hear me knocking? He said, yeah, but I told you the door was open. <laughs> and I just started crying. And he knew. He knew enough about me to know what I was going through, and I was mad. So I was like, get your ass in the door. On the phone, he said, for what? I told you to come through the door. So when I made the door, I'm crying and everything. He just gave me a hug. He said, you are really crazy. He said, you really got this thing bad, don't you? I said, yes. This was hard for me. And it, we sat down and we watched movies and we <laughs> ate pizza, and then I went home, and I didn't have to have that relationship anymore. That was it. I walked through the door. And he was there to teach me that I could walk through the door. And, and, and after that, we were still friends, but I got what I needed out of that, that moment. When I walked through that door, I knew I wasn't going to talk to him every day anymore. But, and I, because I already knew he was there to teach me loyalty. And when I walked through that door, I said, wow, there is a such thing as a man who can be loyal and honest. And this environment was safe for me. And I walked through the door and that was it. Now we're still friends, we get going talk on the phone all the time, but not every day. I would talk to this man every day. Every morning he would call me, good morning, how you doing? And then at nighttime, how was your day? That was, you know, and, and I didn't, after that, we didn't do it anymore. The lesson had been learned, I learned the lesson. So, there are relationships that I go, I'm still going to encounter people and I just encounter them differently now. I encounter them knowing that they're here to teach me something as opposed to me teaching them something. It's, it's gonna be both ways. They're here to teach me something and now I'm aware and available to learn. Makes a difference. So that's how I approach it until, you know, whenever I meet someone, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready to have a person who's going to be in my life for the rest of my life because I'm very married to my work. And to be very married to my work would be to deny someone the attention that they may need. And as it, as it stands right now, I'm not very interested. I'm open. I'm not against it, but I'm not seeking it because I'm very married to this and I don't want to, um, to deny anyone time and space that they may want to enjoy. Not that they need, but that they may want to enjoy. Not sure. Tanisha. Yes, hey, Barb. Hey. How how do we know um, when it's how how do we know if he's if it's a guy like for me the next guy we meet when after we've healed how do we know if it's if he's the one that we're meant to be with or if he's there to teach us a lesson 
how do how do we figure that out yeah because we create it so like i created the lesson i i literally said can you show me a loyal person uh, so when the man came i wasn't looking for my forever because i didn't ask for my forever so the power of intention sets in i say okay thank you i say that's my next book to read. <laughs> Ashe. <laughs> Ashe. Yeah. That's why, like, when people are looking for a person, I'll, I'll ask them, well, did you create them yet? <laughs> did you create them? Did, did spirit, did spirit, did spirit, um, I know you said that, you know, you asked spirit to show you someone loyal. But in any of your relationships, not just this one, but in any of your relationships, did did you ever, did spirit ever um, tell you or show you or or anything to say like, hey, not this one, or 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 um, just give you any kind of clues as to? Yeah. So like when spirit speak, spirit is the truth. Spirit doesn't lie, right? I have a relationship with spirit where spirit doesn't lie we we all do if that's the relationship that we right. create right so this relationship that i'm talking about now really showed me the difference between spirit voice and my voice or my higher self versus my lower self or god versus the devil there's so many ways to classify this in that relationship when i saw it my i would you could you could have told me that about my husband, honey. A spirit that told me that's my husband. I had a, I had a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a journal, and everybody, everybody would tell me that's not your husband. I said, y'all, y'all not listening because God's been told me that's my husband. That's my husband because God's been told it to me. So I would write it down though, like in my book. I would say, today God told me this is my husband, and I need to just push through and stay with him. And then other days it was. God told me, run, Forrest, run. This is not your husband. And <laughs> <laughs> there were days I would hear God say, stick to it. Don't go. Don't run. And then the next day, God said, did you see this sign I gave you? Don't you see this ain't what you want? And then the next day, God told me, this is my husband. I got to stick to it. <laughs> and the next day, did you see what he did? Does that look like that's something you want? Would you run? So I kept a journal, for real. I still have those journals. And at the end, because each feeling was different. When God told me it was my person, it felt different than God telling me it wasn't my person. So I learned the feeling. So when I had when I found out which feeling at the end of the relationship, I knew who was talking. So that relationship was huge for me because it taught me God's voice. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the same voice that I use in my practice. Because I know the sound, I know when it's my ego talking and when it's not. Or I know when it's God talking and when it's not. So there are times when I would have people come on and, and my ego, my mind would go, they are great, great. What are they doing in that crazy relationship? Don't they know they got the wrong for us? Run, but spirit will say they're in the right relationship. Those are the challenges that they have to go through to get to where they're going. But so I still have two voices running inside, right? Right, right. The voice I give to the person is the voice I hear God say, and then once I hear God say it, it silences the ego. Mm. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Mm. Makes sense. So, so the the journal so the journals are like I mean keeping a journal would be <clears throat> would be how you track I mean it's it's how you can um track I got you yeah. makes sense yeah. okay yeah journaling is so important to me because it taught that's what taught me God's voice right right so do you journal any and everything that you hear or just like how do how do you start journaling? I mean, so for me, I was in a relationship when I started journaling, 
And I knew enough to know that that relationship is where I had conflict. So the journaling was important to me. In other areas of my life, I didn't have as much conflict. So I didn't journal in those spaces. I journaled where the conflict was so I could teach myself the voice of God. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start journaling. Yeah. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start journaling. I've heard you talk about it several times and I, I just never picked up I just never took the initiative to do it, but um I I feel I mean I hear I hear in my I hear a voice in my head telling me I need to start journaling. So I don't know what voice that is, but I hear it. I say. So I'm gonna start journaling. <laughs> I say. Yeah. yeah. Can I say something? Yes. Oh, Kiki. Oh my yes. goodness. Journaling is the bomb. You know, I I keep um a journal and I record every day. Like at the end of the night, I just yeah. write in my and I just uh, reflect on my day and I write it out and you know don't you know and just go back like in about a couple of months and just look how far you have came or what answers um, you needed answers to and it'll show up in that journal so I, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. I, yeah. I mean, I, I write, I write, but I never, I mean, and I do like that too. I'll, I'll write and write out my day and things like that. But, but I never looked at it as journaling. I just wrote, I mean, I just, I need, it was a way to vent. It was more yeah. so a way to vent and get it off my chest. If I couldn't say what I wanted to say to whoever, you know, uh, yeah. But this seems like, I mean, journaling, I would look at journaling like more of a positive, positive journaling versus just venting out my day, you know, like I had been doing. So, because this way, at least with journaling, you know, the way that you guys are talking about it, it'll give me, it'll give me the, um, the, the, uh, it'll give me the, the, the difference between me and, and, and spirit. So... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I am. I'm excited. And I also um, put in, even when I'm having a bad day, or even when I'm feeling a certain kind of way, I write that down too. Okay. You know, okay. My emotions, you know, whatever right. emotions uh, you're going, you having, write them down because it does help you um, with a more understanding of yourself. Right. So, I say. Thank you, baby. You welcome, love. Love you. Love you too. That's right. Got some amazing tribe members, I tell you. I love it. I love this space. I love it, guys. I do. I learned a lot today. I'm sorry. I'm just I have I've learned a lot just off of just off of your little story today. I swear to God, I have learned a lot in 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 um uh, I'm yeah, I'm just I'm blessed. I am I'm blessed by it right now. So I'm like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> I say. I say. I say. Well good. That means a lot to us all. It means a lot to us all. Thanks, Kiki. I needed to get journaling. I've been trying and trying and trying and trying. And I'm going to. Tomorrow's February the first. Today's my first day. I'm going to go. I'm going to start journaling with you. I have. We're going to, to. start together. That's right. Okay, we'll start together. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, yep. It's a date. And, and you don't even have to figure out if you're if you're with your right guy because I heard what Doctor New told you the other day and what a blessing you have. You got oh, you got you. her. You got her okay. Like you're okay. <laughs> I got her and spirits okay. <laughs> I, I freaking shake. <laughs> I say yes. Thank you so much. And Kiki, he's cute, yes. and he's got a good head on his shoulder. Right. He, 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 he's, he, yeah, he's he's some eye candy. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely some eye candy. You hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you I deserve do. it because you are too. 
Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I love him. He drives me up the wall sometimes, but I promise you, I love him. I do. I do. Climb up the wall right along with him, honey. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's why when Dr. New said she was going to sample it first, I'm like, you better know what you're buying before you buy it. You know? <laughs> Because you don't want to buy it and then it not be what you do. <laughs> I already bought mine. <laughs> I say. I say. Oh, I love you guys. Where is Lynn? Lynn is, Lynn is somewhere blushing, I know. She laughing. Sitting there laughing. <laughs> This was good. This was really good for, for me too. This was good. And thank you, Colleen, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. Good to see you here too, Selena. Selena, I had to delete that other video because you were on um Facebook. So I deleted it. It can't be seen anymore. It was only like a split second, but I did delete it. But it's not on it no more. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I, I'm sorry too. We didn't get to get no money. <laughs> that was about that was a pay that was a paid event they were supposed to do. <laughs> you have to be there to understand that joke. <laughs> All right, guys. No more questions. I'm gonna go. I love you guys so much. I love you guys so much. We're gonna be on we're here every day at eleven o'clock. Um, starting in February, we're gonna be having the back office conversation like we had just now. Uh, for the a new practice practitioners, they're going to be doing this uh, this back conversation every month. So it's going to be the same as we always have done. We're going to come on live and talk and have a good time, and then we'll shut down and spend some time over here in the back office for those who are inside of the whatever they're going to call it. I don't know what their name of it's going to be, but whatever they call it, and we'll be back here in the back office, and all of us will be here. Me, uh, Lynn. Mama J, Wendy, and Barb. Even though you and, Tiff, and Dr. Tiffany, even though you won't see Barb uh, come up and talk, you'll feel her presence in the room, which is uh, which is more than enough because <laughs> she's such a beautiful soul. Uh, she's standing by as the observer and and learning and growing so much. She's taking this time to learn and grow, and we honor that space for her. But we'll all be here every day, Monday through Friday, and come on around 11 o'clock. So keep coming. I love you guys. And I'm going to end this in...